car. Yep. Hey, how are y'all doing today? Here's a, a railroad safety card. All right, every three hours someone dies in the United States on railroad. So we're trying to uh, prevent people from uh, having accidents and uh, people from walking on the railroad tracks. Oh, okay. Yep. Um, in, Nor in North Carolina, we've had 15 deaths alone already. Wow. Uh, so uh, if you can, uh, whenever you get a moment, just read the front side and back side of it uh -huh. and um, try to stay safe. Okay. Have a good day. Uh, every month, every day, we respond to uh, accidents on the tracks where people stop on the tracks at these uh, intersections. And when a train comes, trains cannot stop in time and they collide with these vehicles and sometimes they end up in fatalities. So we are trying to prevent that or at least cut that down. Um, we've already had 15 deaths this, uh, this year in North Carolina alone. Yeah, we've had about three in the last two weeks. Well, thank you for the education. Yes, ma'am. You. you have a good day. Bye -bye. Operation Lifesaver is a nonprofit railroad safety education and information organization. And our mission is to reduce the number of collisions and incidents that occur at highway rail grade crossings and near railroad tracks. When they approach a crossing, they need to remember they need to slow down and be prepared to stop. The train always has the right of way. And if you stop on the railroad tracks, that's not only um, an in illegal movement, it's also quite dangerous. Uh, a train can come at any time. Trains run on any track at any time from either direction. And in a situation where there's more than one railroad track, there could be a second or even a third train approaching. Uh, this is National Rail Safety Week, and we are giving out flyers to remind people to stay back from the tracks at stoplights and stop uh, signs. In North Carolina, we are, we are generally in the top 15 in the nation in the number of highway rail crossing collisions. Uh, this year we have had, um, I think, one fatality, which was actually in Charlotte with a uh, transit train. Uh, but we've had several injuries involving people who were inside vehicles when they were hit by trains. A lot of those highway rail collisions um, occur when the vehicle has been abandoned. Um, it still causes a big mess for law enforcement. They have to investigate it. Trains have to stop running. Everything, all traffic on tracks has to stop until the incident is cleared. Um, so we've had about, I think we've had 20 highway rail collisions so far this year in 2021. Uh, we have also unfortunately had 15 people killed while walking on railroad tracks. People do not understand that trains are longer, faster, and quieter than ever before, and they can literally sneak up on you. And if you are on railroad tracks for any reason without express permission, you're trespassing. All railroad tracks are private property. All railroad crossings are private property. So if you are on railroad property, you're trespassing, which is a class three misdemeanor, punishable by a fine of up to $350, or you can be struck by a train and injured or killed. It's actually a misdemeanor to walk on the railroads. So uh, we, yeah, we've had a, a few people die that way as well. So uh, when you, whenever you get a quick moment, just read both sides and uh, try to stay safe. I also want to remind people too that trains cannot stop quickly, but you can. So always make sure that you leave yourself living room, don't try to race a train, and don't ever try to beat the train across the crossing. When times get dark, we can't see the help that's all around us. Let 211 be your guiding light for help with food, health care, and other resources. 211, how can I help you? Call 211 or visit 211.org. 211, get connected, get help. Falling behind on your bills? Even if you owe more than you can handle, you still have rights. Most legit debt collectors follow the rules, but bad debt collectors don't. They break the law. So if you get a call like this. If you don't pay, we will have you arrested and deported. Or this. This is your final warning. Pay up now or we'll contact your employer and make them pay. Hang up and report it to the Federal Trade Commission. You have the right to be treated fairly no matter what. That means debt collectors can't use abusive language, threaten violence, or harass you. Or call you before 8 in the morning or after 9 at night. 
They can't lie or pretend to be someone they're not. I'm an attorney and will take legal action if you don't pay this debt right away. Or get you to pay a debt that doesn't even exist. They can't have you arrested or deported or tell anyone about your debt. Bad debt collectors like to knock you off your guard to get an advantage, create a sense of urgency, and rush you. They'll say anything to get you to pay right now. Instead, hang up and report it to the Federal Trade Commission at ftc.gov slash complaint. We've stopped a lot of bad debt collectors. Help us stop more. For more information about debt collection, visit consumer.gov slash debt. To keep things from being stolen from your vehicle, don't leave them in your vehicle. Simple, easy, preventive, preventive measures. Don't leave your items overnight, during the day, five, ten minutes. Take them in the house, take them in the building, into your office. Just make sure they're secure somewhere else besides your vehicle. If you have to leave something in your car, secure it in your trunk. Um, it's less likely to be seen through a window. Um, if you can't secure it in your trunk, you, most people have a locking glove box. Put it inside of your glove box that locks or your center console. Not all of them locked, but at least it's not out in the open, visible, where anyone can walk by and see it. They're looking for easy grabs, book bags, purses. For some reason, people leave laptops, um, MP3s. They look for weapons. They know people leave weapons in the car. So if, if you have to leave a weapon in your car, they make boxes where you can securely lock your weapon in the vehicle, unseen. You can always call the police, um, reference suspicious activity or a suspicious person. Do not approach them yourselves. You never know if they're armed or what their intentions may be. Before you go through it, call the police first. Um, hopefully they're able to get fingerprints off of it, but call the police before you go through your vehicle. If it appears that they've gotten in, nine times out of 10, they probably did get in and just didn't see anything worth taking. A lot of heavy equipment, especially for construction, is kind of hard to take in and out. Um, if you can secure it down, get lock boxes, a lot of trucks offer toolboxes, lock boxes. If it's big items, get chains, find ways to secure it down with chains. Um, if, if you can and you're not able to, then one of the best things you can do is make sure that you have these serial numbers so that if they do get stolen, they can be located if they're pawned or stolen or sold to someone else. Put it up, put it up, put it away, keep it out of the public's eye. Multiple studies have shown that marijuana can slow both driver reaction and response time, which can be really dangerous. He's here. He's here. Wait, wait, wait. Why? I can't drive. Why? Why? My. Oh. <laughs> no, you can't. There was a time in my life where I was extremely homesick. I decided that I needed a pet. When I first saw a turtle, my heart was full. He jumped up and kissed me and like jumped right into my arms. I immediately went up to the volunteers at the shelter and said, I want him, like, he's gotta come home with me. Not anything but lonely. Every day with turtle is a perfect day and keeps me company when I'm doing schoolwork. I like it when he jumps up on the table, too. He is a veggie thief. He's an incredible companion and my best friend. Can't say that I've met anybody that doesn't love him, too. When I adopted Turtle, I discovered all the things that make him unique. He's a little bit of a lot of things, but mostly he's all pure love. Kids will be kids, which just goes to say, kids will be curious. They get into everything, everything. If there's a loaded firearm in the house, they could get their hands on that too. 
keeping firearms locked, unloaded, and stored separately from ammunition in a place inaccessible to kids can help keep your loved ones safe from family fire. Safe gun storage saves lives. I'm Sergeant Norwood, Durham County Sheriff's Office. I'm currently assigned to the scope unit. Today we are doing the Operation Medicine Drop. It's a program um, that we participate in in the Durham County Sheriff's Office that's given by the um, State Bureau of Investigation. Okay, so Carolina Arbors is a fabulous community. Um, we have residents that are 55 and better. Um, there are 1,292 homes here at Carolina Arbors. We have like about approximately 2,200 residents. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Operation Meds Drop is an opportunity for people to take um, old or not used medicine, control substances, and bring them to a like, um, place like this where it's secure and pass over to law enforcement so we can get rid of them the proper way. And they have done the pill drop in the past, and it has helped the residents to get rid of um, their unwanted expired medicines and help to clean out their medicine cabinets. Um, those medications are given into the wrong hands or fall in the wrong hands. It can be used for giving, selling them back on the streets and stuff like that. And a lot of times people do also hold on to them and not know what to do with them. And sometimes they flush them and that's not what you want to do. It just helps them to purge and get rid of unwanted medicines in a safe and healthy way. We secure the medicines in these boxes, then we destroy them later by incineration. Have a good day, okay? Hi, Toby Keith here. Like most of us, I love driving, but too many people die every year on America's roads. So always buckle up, slow down, drive sober, stay focused on driving. Every day officers enforce traffic laws to keep our families safe on the road. So drive smart. And do your part to save lives. A message from the National Sheriff's Association. I decided to take my shot to protect myself, my family, my community. I feel comfortable being here right now is because I'm fully vaccinated. There's nothing else like this. The vaccine is safe. I've had both of my vaccinations. I don't think there's a sane reason for folks not getting the shots. So let's go ahead and take the shot and we can do it together. You have a spot. Take your shot. You have a spot. Take your shot. Everyone from teens to seniors can get a COVID-19 vaccine. Visit myspot.nc.gov. What we're doing today is doing a control burn on narcotics that we're in, we've been authorized to be stored by the court system. And what we're doing this through is what we call a drug terminator. These are bricks of marijuana. Uh, we have bricks of heroin as well and cocaine. So, like I said, we're in the process of destroying those. What we have to do is basically put them inside a paper bag. And we'll close them up. We'll drop them inside this container. 
we'll put them inside the drug terminator. Process. This thing will burn a couple of thousand degrees, so it's burning everything. We drop pills in, like cocaine, heroin, a lot of marijuana, and that's, that's the process. Hello? Yeah, I just parked the car. I'm on my way up. What are you here? Sorry, it's been a really hectic morning, but I'm here. I am so sorry. I can't believe I forgot to drop you off. Your mom usually takes you to take care. Let's make sure you're all right. We all make choices. When it comes to alcohol, kids make choices whether to drink or not. Bye, Dad. Bye-bye. Remember, I'm going to Alex's party tonight and sleeping over. You know, have fun. Hey, Em, have a seat for a second. Remind me about that party again. And adults make choices whether to talk about it. That's true of parents and every other trusted adult in a kid's life. Kids want to know our expectations when it comes to alcohol and other drugs. They want guidance and honest answers to their questions. And it makes a difference when the message is consistent and part of everyday conversations. So talk with your kids and help lead them on a positive path. Because when you talk, they hear you. For more information about talking with your kids about underage use of alcohol and other drugs, visit underagedrinking.samsa.gov. excited we're overjoyed um, that these graduates are here to now uh, represent uh, the sheriff's department and police officers not just in our nation but in Durham Academy God, we, we endure and partake in different parts of instructions learn about laws and arrest search and seizure elements to getting gassed and uh, gasping for air pretty much <laughs> um, but it was all worth it every minute of it these non cadets here we fought to yeah. and I'm proud to sit here and uh, speak for you guys on your behalf. Um, there's not another non-cadets I would ever want to go through this academy with but you guys. So thank y'all, we appreciate it. We have the best instructors in the state of North Carolina. Our instructors are what make our academy so successful. Our instructors are always willing to help and spend the extra time to make sure each cadet understands and is proficient in whatever block of instruction that is being taught. I can't thank them enough for all they do for me, the class, and the agency. Throughout this 19-week academy, BLET Class 43 has completed 758 hours of instructional and practical time uh, and, and hours of grueling physical training session. I met with the class the week before the academy started and told them my standards as a school director and our standards as an agency. I also told the class thank you for being here and thank you for stepping up in a time where many are not willing to step up and several are stepping out. I'm proud to say that this class took my words to heart and has met the standards and requirements to become law enforcement officers in the state of North Carolina. Okay. Walk down. Walk. 
there, there, right there, there. Forward, walk. Left, right, left, left. Now for the presentation of their certificates. Deputy Shawnee Brent. Deputy Alice Darylis. <laughs> Deputy Joel Diaz. <laughs> Deputy John Lawson. Deputy Brandon Faison. <laughs> Deputy Patrick Leach. <laughs> Deputy James Lynch. Deputy Shadrice Montanez. <laughs> Deputy Elizabeth Phoenix. <laughs> Deputy Nathaniel Saunders. Now I'd like to invite Sheriff Burkhead to give some remarks. And I'm proud of each and every one of you. The 10 of you who are sitting here today are the elite. You finished it. You, every challenge set before you, you overcame some shortcomings and some difficulties all during the pandemic. So I am extremely proud of each and every one of you because I know what you've been through. We are, as law enforcement professionals, as, as we said earlier, we take an oath to serve. We're not in this job for the glitz and the glamour and certainly not the money, but we are here to serve. And as I look at the 10 of you, I see new servant leaders in this community. Here's class 43 on your feet. The last time you are dismissed. Congratulations. Durham County Sheriff's Office, where's your emergency? Okay, we'll get deputies on the way.
I'm Durham County Sheriff Clarence Burkhead, and we want you to join our team. Honor, duty, service. If you have what it takes, our recruiting starts now. We really are worried that this Delta variant is going to find everyone who's not protected. The fact that this is more infectious, causing worse outcomes, and spreading like wildfire in the United States, I don't believe this is a wait and see period. It's a time to really roll those sleeves up and get those shots. There are more people dying this week than there was last week. Our rates of hospitalizations are going up. The people that are losing their lives are the people that are unvaccinated. And the good news we know is that the vaccines we have are effective against this variant and against preventing serious infections in those who do get the Delta variant. These vaccines are safe, they are effective, and they're necessary for us to try to get back to normal. Look, you're rolling the dice, you're playing roulette with, with this, and the longer and longer you wait, the more and more likely that you are to get this and can suffer really severe consequences from it. Everyone from teens to seniors can get a COVID-19 vaccine. Visit myspot.nc.gov. Porque se necesita vacunar. Necesitamos que todos ustedes se vacunen. Necesitamos poder terminar con la pandemia. Hay muchas familias que han muerto por esta terrible, terrible, terrible enfermedad. No queremos más familiares muertos. No queremos más familiares en los hospitales. Entonces creo que poniendo el ejemplo los podemos ayudar y será un lugar más seguro y estarán abiertos los lugares al 100% y pues todo volverá más rápido a la normalidad. Cuida a tu familia, es lo más importante. Cuida a los que amas, cuida de ti mismo. Tu familia necesita eh, que todo vuelva a la normalidad. Pues sabemos que las vacunas eh, son seguras y que también COVID es algo, algo grave y todavía se está pasando en nuestras comunidades. Entonces, como mamá y como doctora, yo digo que es muy importante que, que nos vacunemos a, a nuestros hijos. Protégete a ti y a los demás. Vacúnate. Para más información visite vacunate.ns.gov. 